Lord, we do thank you for your divine intention. Amen. You just want to make us exactly the same as you are. Amen. Lord, you have added your divine life to our human, created, fallen, redeemed, and resurrected humanity. Amen. Lord, you have sanctified our crooked disposition Amen. to straighten us like you are in your holy nature. Amen. Lord, you are still working, Amen. working Amen. until we will be redeemed in our body Amen. to make us just as what you are. Amen. Eventually, we can say, Lord, what you are, we are. Amen. And what we are, you are. Amen. The only difference that is, you have the Godhead, thank you and worship you that we don't have. Amen. You are the unique God. Amen. You are the triune God, Amen. processed Amen. and consummated. Amen. We have humanity plus divinity. Amen. And today you have divinity plus humanity. Amen. 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 What a wonder that God has humanity, Amen. the triune God, Amen. the processed, consummated triune God has humanity. Amen. 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 Lord, this morning, oh, open the heaven to us. Amen. We'd like to be in the heaven to see all the things Amen. as you see. Yes. Give us utterance. Amen. This is absolute, absolute, absolutely a new culture yes. in the mystical realm. Amen. We need your language. Amen. We need your utterance. Amen. 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 We just have to go directly to cover the last two sections, confirmation and glorification. It is so clear that confirmation is the continuation of transformation. So here it says confirmation is the consummation, the completion of transformation. Transformation is a gradual work to transform us into the glorious image of Christ. We all know today this Christ is not that simple. It's all inclusive, right? It's all complicated and complicating. It needs a message and a message to speak who is this Christ? Right? Not that simple. <clears throat> Into the glorious image of Christ that needs a consummation. And this consummation is the confirmation to conform the transformed believers. We are being transformed. We are still under transformation. Very good, but not consummated. Our transformation has to be consummated. And the consummation of our transformation is just confirmation. Transform believer to be the image of the firstborn Son of God. 
the first got him in. Again, the firstborn son of God. It's a complicating term. Go to ask and check with Christianity theologians, Dr. Sanso, what's the difference between the only begotten Son of God and the firstborn? And ask him a few questions. How could the only begotten be the firstborn? Right? Now how could the firstborn be the only begotten? Firstborn indicates many, many are following to come, to come up. <laughs> right? <sighs> you ask them in God in Christ's resurrection, what were produced? I don't believe any theologian can tell you. Three big items were produced. The firstborn son was produced. And the what? The life giving spirit. Who is the transfiguration? of the last Adam. And number three, all the children predestinated ones were regenerated there. My what? An outcome. Firstborn Son of God, the life giving spirit, and millions regenerated believers. Saints, many of you have been Christians for years, for years. Have you ever heard these kind of things? Even among us, Many cannot speak clearly. You know this. Many cannot speak clearly. But now, God grant us mercy with grace to put all the things together. Amen. All the things are scattered in the Holy Scriptures, especially in the New Testament are pieces of big, big, big puzzle of salt. But in these days, I tell you the truth, in my whole life, I never have such a happy days as in these days. Amen. Most happy days. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I, oh. Right? Okay. Small two. Such a confirmation is the full growth of the divine trinity. The train God's growth as life as the divine life in Christ. Such a confirmation is the full growth of the triumph God as the divine life in Christ. You better read Colossians 1, 28. Number three, it is also the full grown man the full-grown man at the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. <laughs> I don't know whether you have studied or recovered Ephesians with the notes. 
if you don't study that, I don't believe you can answer me. Three things are here, the measure, the stature, and the fullness of Christ. What are these three things? Oh, Howard, lift up your head. Tell us what are the three things, the measure, the track, the stature, and the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Stand up and speak. Yeah. And now, you see, he got caught. Okay, who can tell me, who can tell me about these three things clearly? Stand up and do it. Otherwise, you all got caught. This morning, not one can tell us what the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When I, as a Bible reader, first read such a phrase, I said, I cannot understand the fullness of this. And the fullness has a statue. I better not speak too much. If I speak too much, you are clear, you get clear. <laughs> I should not sell my cargo so cheaply. How about we ask Brother Benson to tell us? Well, in Ephesians 4, 13, we have the phrase, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Three things are here. Measure, stature, and fullness. The stature has a measure, and also the fullness has a stature. Uh, and, uh, 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 the stature has a measure. And the fullness has the stature. That's okay. <laughs> what is the fullness, first and I ask you? According to oh, Ephesians but, 1, well, 23. Well, well, what is the fullness? The fullness is the church. The body of Christ. That's right. Don't say church. <laughs> yeah. Ephesians, where, where this word is used? Ephesians 1, 23. Right. What it says? Which is his body, the fullness of Christ. The one who fills all which, which refers to what? Which refers to the church. Yeah. The is church body. is the body, the fullness of the one who fills all in all. Very extensive. This extensive one has a body. And that body, his fullness. For what? For his creation. Everybody has his statue. Okay, go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This one that fills all in all is the fullness. I mean, has a body which is his fullness. Amen. And this fullness has a statue. A statue. That means the body has a sp statue. The body has a statue. And then the statue. My statue is a 5 7. My statue is 5 7. <laughs> his body is his fullness, and the stature is 5 7. <laughs> and this, and this uh, statue also has a measure. Right. I, uh, this is about, okay, you got B. Uh, <laughs> Christ is all-inclusive and all-extensive, unlimited, who fills all in all. Such a one has a body. And this body is just his expression. Body, like our body, has a statue. What the measure? Five, seven? Who can measure it? No one can measure. Listen. But 
our confirmation. What is it here? Our confirmation is also the full grown man at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. My, to be conformed to the image of the first born son of God is what? Is all this. It's all this. Is the full grown man at the proper measure of the proper stature, of the proper expression, the fullness, the body of Christ. 32 years ago, I came to this country. I heard people talking about body ministry, body ministry. I heard, I said, you people just don't know what you are talking about. What is the body? Who knows? The body is the aggregate of all the believers who, through transformation, has been conformed to the image of the firstborn son of God, and this is the full grown man. Right? The full grown man at a measure. No one can measure it. Of the statue, of the fullness of Christ. No word can explain. You're measurable. But we can attain to that. You know, we can attain to that. We can reach that, reach it. To be conformed at the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Think about it. This is, a, I say, today's Christianity need to be re-educated. They never have received the proper education. You just listen to me in these three days. I just pick up verses to read with you. You can realize our study of the Bible is different. It's absolutely different. This is the way to pick up the intrinsic significance that you can attain to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ as the body. The body. Oh, saints, we need to see this. Okay, now we come to last. Roman 8, to open the eighth section of glorification. Even this matter is distorted by Christian teachers. Glorification is the final step of God's organic salvation in Christ, which brings the conformed believers into God's glory. Ha ha. You like to get into the glory? You have to be confirmed. You have to finish your four-year course. Then a graduation will be granted to you. The glorification is the graduation of the full Christian life course. You think just like this? Oh, oh I'm in glory. 
Hallelujah. And this is the talk among Christians. And this is what they taught, they teach still. I got this teaching. And they think of my eye. Oh. Nonsense. It's a gradual work. From when? From your generation. From your regeneration. Step by step. Through what? Through much feeding. Through the sanctification of your disposition. And through the renewing through the transformation, and through the building up, and through the confirmation, that may be the last lesson. Now, a graduation paper will be useful to you. You are glorified. Uh, I don't have the time. If I do, I sure like to read Romans 8, 18, 21, Hebrew to 10 and so forth with you to show you how to read it. Then you could get the intrinsic significance. You could see the real thing. But we don't have that much time. Such a glorification. Ah, listen to this. I believe you never heard of this. This glorification is the saturation of God's glory from within you, from within the believers, saturating. A kind of glory saturating you all the time. Like what? Like the inching. The inching of the ceiling, you know, when you have a seal, right? You use the seal to ink, to ink the ink. And the ink has a kind of inching. Some, sometime, I told you already, just you in, you put your seal upon this pair of paper with a thick ink, right? Then from the time of inking, it will saturate, saturate. Inching, 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 saturate, saturate, eventually to the last page. Right? When we have been sealed by this inching, Ephesians 1, 13, two verses, and chapter 4, 30. 30 is the most clear one. 30 says, what? says, from our belief, we have been sealed with this spirit huh? until the redemption. Again, this Greek preposition, until, resulting in. Resulting in. This inching here is resulting in what? In the redemption. Resulting. How much freedom do you give this inching of your Christian life? I tell you to be smoothly <clears throat> sanctified, dispositionally. That means you just let the engine go fastly. Then the renewing. If you are a good boy, not so naughty, right? You just act the renewing. Does it work? I tell you, the renewing goes like an engine. The same thing with the Transformation. Transformation is a kind of inching. Inching. And the confirmation is a thorough inching. Thoroughly saturated. 
then what? Then now you are in glory. This to be in the glory has two aspects. See, you enter into the glory, that's one aspect, but uh -huh, the glory has been saturating you for your Christian life. Right? From within. I believe you have never heard such a word. I do thank the Lord. I believe and I have the feeling that every day I am under his inking. Every day, every day, every day. 30 years ago I was here, I came here. The ink, or the inching, has come through, not that so deep as today. Maybe I still need another eight years. That the inching could get through. The saturating could be completed. Then the glory, then I'm in glory. Can you see this? You enter into the glory, that, that's true, but not that way, but by the inching way, by the saturating way. Okay. Such a glorification, three is to transfigure our body of humiliation to be conformed to the body of his glory. It is also a kind of transfiguration. Transfiguration. Nearly the same word, transformed. Transform, transfigure, nearly the same word. Am I right, Curry? Yes, that's correct. Right. So to be transfigured is what? Is to be the last step of transformation. To change the form of the outward body. And our body today is a body of humiliation. Really so, really so, especially in these three years weakness. I realize this body is a body of humiliation. But you will be transfigured into another form of another body, that is, into the glorious body of Christ. Hence, it is called the redemption of the believer's body. Number four, such a glorification, the redemption of our body is the full enjoyment of our sonship. I tell you, <coughs> until your body be redeemed, <coughs> your body has not been sinized. Are you the son of God? Yes, but I tell you, your body, in my body has not been sinized. To be transfigured, to be redeemed, it is to be what? To be sinized. We were born of sins of God from our regeneration time. But at that time, only our spirit was born, was sinized. Then gradually, gradually, transformation, to wherever transformation goes, sinship follows. I tell you, regeneration is the first step of sinizing. Then sanctification is the following step. 
renewing the following step, transformation the following step, step by step to be sinized. And the last step is to sinize our body. I see again <clears throat> all these kind of points. I believe probably many of you have never heard all this has never been taught in Christianity's theology. Think about it. But anyhow, we have covered this. <laughs> in these days, I was considering, I repeat again, forgive me, I was <clears throat> speaking in the US from 1942 December, the last week. 62. Oh yeah, 62, thank you, 62. So from January 63, counting, I've been speaking, speaking, speaking in this country for 33 years thousands of messages put out. <clears throat> the contents of all those messages, if you look into, are just point by point by point of these things. You read him 507. Uh, 501. Sorry, 501. And that was written in Taipei. 1961, in Chinese, it was translated in English. Then 203, right? Where are your duplication, this and continuation, this and that. that was written in LA, 63, right? Transformation, right? Then, would you sing that word to us, transformation? Lord, transform us to thy image. was written also in 1963. <clears throat> All the hymns contained in this hymnal were written that year, 1963. Let's think about it. Pieces were pieces. But this year, 96, oh, the mercy came to me to put all the things together. Not pieces of, of the big soul. No, but a full picture. Last night and this morning, I am just presenting you a full picture. A full picture showing what? Showing how God, listen, <laughs> regenerated you with his divine life. Amen. That means he added his divine life to your human life. Uh, don't think your human life is altogether useless. No, 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 no. Your human life was created by God, right? God could never throw away what he created, but you got fallen. This is why there needs redemption. Redemption means what? To redeem back the red thing that's lost. Right? Not only redeem it, redeem, but resurrect it. <laughs> resurrect it. When the Lord died on the cross, he died with us, with our natural man. So we were there, crucified with him and better with him, and also resurrected with him. See, so with us, there is a human part created, fallen, redeemed, uplifted, and 
resurrected. <laughs> then this resurrected life, haha, <laughs> to this life, the divine life is added. So two lives living together, two lives grafted together, right? Otherwise, how could we live with him? We live with him. Yeah, because we have our own life plus his life. So we live with him. Amen. This regeneration to have an addition of our life. Then sanctification to straighten or crooked, distorted, perverted, natural nature, that is the disposition, right? Life is added and a kind of a straightening, right? To straighten our nature. With what? With his holy nature. The Holy Spirit <coughs> dispense God's holy nature into your being to straighten your crooked disposition. That means to, uh, to what? To adjust your nature. Your life has been added and your nature has been straightened. That is what means we partake of the divine nature. We partake of the divine nature. The divine nature is so perfect, straight, right? It has an element, and the element has been used by the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. So our nature is corrected. Then our mind is renewed, actually, is to be changed. Philippians 2 tells us we should have the mind of Christ. Our mind, sometimes we say, your head needs to be changed. <laughs> your head should be cut off and put a new head. <laughs> God was not that well to, to cut off our, our head and give us a new, new head, not that way but in a gentle way that his spirit, listen to this, mingle with our spirit to saturate our mind with all the thoughts, the logics of God to change our mind. So our mind is changed. Think about it. Then our whole being is transformed based upon regeneration, based upon the sanctification, based upon the renewing. Aha, the Lord's Spirit today is what? Is transforming our entire body by what? By the addition of His divine life element to cause the metabolism within us, you see? This changes, transforms our entire being. And then eventually this transformation will be confirmed, will be completed. And that means what? That means we will be the full-grown man at the statue, at the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And we will be what? To the image Confirmed to the image of the firstborn son of God. My goodness, the firstborn son of God is just aggregate of the triune God. Then eventually what? Eventually this glory will come out from us and we will enter, the, enter into the glory and we will be in glory. When we will attain there, we will see Lord God, what a mercy and what a grace. We can be what you are. 
and what you are, we are. And what we are, Lord, you are. Amen. You are the same. This is the ultimate consummation of these eight sections of God's organic salvation. It's not just to redeem us judicially, to wash us, to reconcile us with him. No, not just that much, that's too low. That is an earthly ministry. That is then by Christ in the flesh, not by Christ in as the life-giving spirit. Not by Christ as the pneumatic Christ, not by Christ even as the sevenfold intensified spirit. I hope that we all could see this. Okay. We still have a message, another message. Now we come to Roman 9. But anyhow, this morning I have to control the time. My, my time is still over. It's about one hour already. What shall we do? Okay. And now to open the additional section. I don't know how to call it. Just additional. Of the sevenfold intensified organic salvation of God. Sevenfold intensified organic. Not only organic, but sevenfold intensified organic. Like the sun in Isaiah, I see it in Isaiah 30, sevenfold. The sun will become sevenfold stronger. The sunshine will be sevenfold intensified in the millennium. Today we have the spirit sevenfold intensified. Note the three sections of Christ's ministry. First, the first section of his earthly ministry, earthly ministry, accomplished by him judicially in the physical realm as a Christ in the flesh from his incarnation to his death within his human age of 33 and a half years. It's clear, I just read it, that you have to study it, okay? Two, the second section of his half of the ministry, not earthly, but half of the ministry, carried out by him organically, not judicially, in the mystical realm, not the physical realm, as the Christ, not in the flesh, but as the life-giving spirit from his resurrection. A new start. The incarnation is the first start. The start of his life in uh, the flesh. But resurrection is another start from his resurrection to the end of the millennium within the age of the church and the age of the kingdom. Long. Two ages. Three. The third section of his sevenfold intensified, sevenfold intensified, half of the ministry carried out by him, sevenfold intensified organically, not just organically, but sevenfold intensified organically in the mystical realm. Mystical realm as the Christ, as a sevenfold intensified life-giving spirit. From what? From the degradation of the dead church to the coming of the new heaven and the new earth. 
It's clear. There's only one thing I do believe you will ask. When the degradation of the church began? This is hard to answer. But anyhow, <clears throat> by Second Timothy, we could see when the Apostle Paul was still on the earth, right? In Second Timothy, he told us what? He told us, Haya. The whole Asia church left his ministry. Could you believe? All the churches in Asia left Paul's ministry. Alexander was seeking a way to kill him, to persecute him. Alexander, the coppersmith, must be one who knew Paul quite well. Otherwise, how could he be his opposer? And others, like you and I, and others, they don't believe resurrection. This resurrection is over. You will be never again. And Demas, Paul's co-worker, loved the world and give up Paul. All these descriptions to show us what? To show us the degradation. The degradation of the church. After writing that book, he was martyred. He was martyred. Most of the Bible students believe he was martyred in the 60s. <clears throat> in, the first, in the first century, about 66 or to 68. Then the book of Revelation was written 30 years later. You can figure out when the degradation began in between Paul's ministry and John's ministry. And the revelation was written by the year around 96. This was 30 years, right? If you read Revelation, you will realize degradation was there, not just began. It was there. It was there. So the book opens up in this way. Grace and peace from the one who was, who is, and who shall be, this is the Father. And the four, no, no, and the seven spirits before God the throne. This is the second person of the trial of the Trinity. And the witness, that's Christ. Then it gives us the full record of the move of the sevenfold spirit. So the degradation of the church probably began somewhere around 70. At Paul's time, that was the beginning, right? If you read the second John, you could see they were arguing about Christ's person. Some say he was a man, some say he was not a man. You know, all this, you better read Second John chapter 2. The notes give you all the history, uh, uh, histories, right? Okay, but anyhow, when the book of Revelation was written, degradation of the church was there already. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> these, uh, these are what? This half of the ministry, sevenfold intensified, right? To do what? To do what? You see, A, capital A, two. To do what? Number one, to save the believers 
in the church in Ephesus from the formal church life, <coughs> just a kind of formal church life. <coughs> They keep the proper things of the church, this and that, right? But they have lost the first love to the Lord. And they have lost the shining capacity of the lampstand, shining power, and the enjoyment of Christ as life. <clears throat> to save them to become overcomers so that they will be rewarded to eat of the tree of life in the paradise of God that is the new Jerusalem in the kingdom age. I just can read to you. You need much study. Okay? Small two. Strengthen the suffering believers in the church of Smyrna to overcome the persecution by being martyred so that they will be rewarded not to taste the second death. Holy days. I don't know how to say. But anyhow, it is there. Huh. Some will, some believers will taste the second death. <clears throat> Brother Neil was strong. He said, these were the proofs. Even you are saved if you don't overcome, you will still be touched by the second death. You will not perish there, but you will taste <clears throat> during the kingdom age. Three. Sanctify the believers in the church in Pergamos. By that time, the church in Pergamos <clears throat> became very world. According to text there, he married the church in Pergamos, married with the world. From the union that, that it can marry with the world, and from the teachings of Balaam and the Nicolaitans to be the overcomers, so that they may be rewarded to eat the hidden manna and to have a white stone that signify themselves, upon which a new name will be written in the kingdom age because they were so overcoming, the Lord gave him a new name written on a piece of stone as a reward to them. <clears throat> Number four, rescue the believers in the church in Teotera from the idol worship. This is the Catholic Church, the fornication, <laughs> demonic teachings, and the deep things of Satan to be overcomers so that they may be rewarded with the authority over the nations in the kingdom age. You will be the ruler of the coming age, but you have to overcome all the Catholic heresies. Five, revive the believers in the church in Sardis from what? from their dead and dying condition. The Lord says, with you, Sardis, everything is dead and everything is dying. <clears throat> to be the overcomers so that they may be rewarded with watching with the Lord in white garment and which will not <clears throat> have their names erased from the book of life, but confessed by the Lord <clears throat> before the Father and his angels in the kingdom age. Then, six, 
and carried the believers in the church in Philadelphia, these ambassadors, to hold fast what they have, that no man take their crown to be they to be the overcomers, so that they may be rewarded to be a pillar in a temple of God that will be in the New Jerusalem with the name of God and the name of the New Jerusalem and the na new name of the Lord written upon them in the kingdom. This name upon them indicates that they are this. See? Now you bear a name Rankangas. You are the Rankangas. <laughs> See? Those overcomers will have a new name, the New Jerusalem. That means they are the New Jerusalem. And they are God because they have God's name upon them. And they are the Lord Jesus because they have the Lord Jesus' new name upon them. They became. Very meaningful, right? <clears throat> Uh, seven, awake the believers in the church in Laodicea from their lukewarm, lukewarm and crystallized condition. They are not only lukewarm, they are crystallized. Why? Because Christ is not within them. Christ is out the door, knocking. They are crystallized condition, exhorting them to pay the price for the refined gold and the white garments and the eyes of and to open their door to the knocking Lord to be the overcomers so that they may be rewarded to sit on the throne of the Lord in the kingdom age. All in the kingdom age rewarded. Very meaningful. Well, if you like the details to under all stand all the items, you better read Revelation chapter 2, 3, with all the notes, okay? To do this, by what? By the speaking of the unlimited, life-releasing, sevenfold intensified pneumatic Christ. The speaking of such a Christ. The Lamb with the seven spirits um, as his eyes. Why we say pneumatic Christ? Because, listen, Christ was the Lamb. And the seven spirit are the eyes of the Lamb. The seven spirits are the eyes of Christ. Just say like your eyes are on your face. No one can separate your eyes from your person. So as the sevenfold spirit are the eyes of Christ, and this indicates they are just one with Christ. <clears throat> so Christ is the pneumatic Christ to the seven churches at the beginning. They're speaking of the unlimited Christ to the seven churches at the beginning of each episode respectively and his speaking becoming the speaking of the sevenfold intensified, all-inclusive, life-giving spirit to all the seven churches at the end of each epistle universally. You read those seven epistles at the beginning of each Christ speaking. At the end of each, the spirit speaking. And this indicates what? This indicates Christ is just the Spirit, and the Spirit just Christ. Otherwise, how could this one speak and becomes that one speaking? The eternal one. Okay. To do that much, as listed above, by what? Just by the speaking. Just by Christ speaking, becoming the life-giving Spirit. In the new, in the in the revelation, you have to listen to this. Just listen to this. <laughs> for what? For number one, for the complete preparation of the bride for Christ. The bridegroom. <clears throat> 
prepare the bride for Christ, the bridegroom, to have his triumphant wedding in the millennium for his satisfaction according to his good pleasure. Today, people are talking about that the church is the bride, is the bride of Christ, but where is the bride? Right? Where is the bride? But the overcomers, they will uh, complete the preparation of the bride. <clears throat> For Christ, the bridegroom, to have his triumphant wedding in the thousand years for his sake. Small two, the formation of the bridal army, an army formed by the bride. So I call it the bridal army for Christ to defeat and destroy his top enemies in humanity. Who are they? <clears throat> the Antichrist and his false prophet. The coming Antichrist and his false prophet will be human enemies of, of Christ, are taking Christ to the uttermost. They will face to face with an army fighting against Christ. But Christ would not lower down his status, the creator, to fight with the creature. But he has a wife. He has a wife who is the human creature. The wife fed down Antichrist and uh, the false prophet destroyed them <clears throat> and threw them into the lake of fire. Uh, three, the binding of Satan and the casting of him into the abyss for 1,000 years for the beginning of the bringing uh, in of the kingdom of Christ and of God, which will be the millennium, the thousand year kingdom. Five, the initial consummation of the new Jerusalem in the millennium, in the thousand years, and its full consummation in the new heaven and new earth. In other words, <clears throat> the new Jerusalem will be consummated by the overcomers. Firstly, that is the initial part in the thousand years, in a small scale. Then finally, in the New Jerusalem, with full scale, all the believers through the uh, discipline of the 1,000 years will be matured, transformed, confirmed to join the new Jerusalem. And this will be the work by the overcomers. The, the final outcome, the ultimate consummated spirit, this spirit is the consummation of the process Chang God. He becomes the bridegroom and the aggregate of the overcoming saints becomes the bride of the universal romance between the bride of the, uh, between the redeeming God and his redeemed man as a conclusion of the entire scripture. Very good, very interesting, right? The whole Bible has a kind of a conclusion. That conclusion is a couple. The, the universal romance of God, the redeeming God, and his redeemed man. The bride was the consummated spirit. I mean, the, the bridegroom was the consummated spirit as God. And the bride was aggregate of all the overcomers. Very interesting. This is all done and accomplished by the additional, <laughs> additional section 
of the what? Of the additional section of the sevenfold intensified organic salvation of God. I stop. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministry.